Welcome or welcome back, Happy Fabricators. In this video, we are going to do a one-year review on our Prime Weld MIG 180 here. So we've actually had this machine for a little over 15 months now. So in this video, we're just gonna talk about how I've used it, how it's held up, and my overall thoughts. Once again, thanks for clicking in. Make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. It's free to do so. And let's get started with the video. Okay, so obviously this thing's dirty and hasn't really been babied, but hopefully that's a testament to its longevity and how it has held up. So like I said before, I've had this thing for going on a little more than 15 months now. And if you notice something different than the website one, if you're comparing to the website and looking at purchasing one of these machines, this is the Gen 1 machine. They have since changed some things on it. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll talk about the things that I know of that they've changed in the Gen 2 version. And if this video gets a fair amount of likes, I will get my hands on a Gen 2 and do a hands-on review for you guys for that second generation so you guys can see the physical difference of it. But in any case, this is the Gen 1. This is what I've been using for the last 15 months and we're going to talk about how it's held up for me. The first thing that I really appreciate about this machine is that it is a dual voltage machine and what that means is it will allow you to plug into a 110 or a 220 wall outlet and it just comes with this little adapter here. But what that's done is allowed it to be much more versatile of a machine for me. Prior to this, I had a little Lincoln SP100 that was only 110 volts. And although ha having the 110 capability is amazing, you can bring it onto more job sites and stuff like that, or more portable applications where not everybody might have 220 outlets. But then if you need it, it still has these 220 capabilities and really be able to put some heat into a part and weld some thicker stuff. So as far as how much mileage I've put on this machine, I use it fairly regularly, but I don't know if I consider it an industrial application. I use it probably once or twice a week, and sometimes that's a couple seconds tacking something, and sometimes that's an hour at a time, it just depends. But a better way to measure it, I think, is the amount of spools that I've put through it. And so far, I've put five two-pound spools through it and four 10-pound spools of hard wire. So I've ran 50 pounds of wire through this machine in the last year. I feel like that's a fairly good testament. And so far, it's been hiccup-free. I've had zero issues with this machine. I primarily run this thing off of 7525, but I've also ran it off of CEO2. I don't know if you've watched one of my other videos where I retrofitted this little bracket that sits on the back so that I could hook a paintball tank to it. And that's something else that's super nice about a little MIG welder is you can run it off of CO2. So I just have this little adapter here that I keep down in the bottom. And then if for some reason I run out of 7525 on a job site, CO2 sometimes is more readily, readily available and that just gives you another option to get the job done. As far as the overall durability of this thing, it's held up extremely well. A lot of times this thing lives under the bench here, it's covered in dust and grime, but I would say probably once or twice a month, this thing gets thrown in the back of my truck or in the back of my Jeep and goes out to work on something that is not at the house here. It's been thrown around and so far, I don't think there are any broken plastics on it. Not that I see. So the body panels have held up very well on it. Even the plastic corners, I don't see any cracking on them. There's rub rash obviously from getting thrown in the back of the vehicles, but that's going to happen. The torch on this thing's held up very well. I haven't had any problems with it. I know a lot of people complain that it's too short because I believe this is a 10 foot whip on this thing. And I personally haven't had an issue with it. This is a light enough machine that I can just kind of drag it around and it doesn't really bother me. But I know I've seen from comments that really bother some people. I do have just a little bit of cracking starting to show itself on the back of the gas line. But honestly, that's probably due to my fault for not dressing my lines properly, especially when I move it around. I've caught these lines on things. Another feature of this machine is it can stick weld and I have taken it done a couple of stick welding jobs with it, but not very many. I think I've actually only done two stick welding jobs with it. So I don't know if I can give a full testament to that. It worked just fine, but the stick welding side of it did not get a lot of cycling in, in the time that I've had it. The other capability that this machine came with is a spool gun. And I ran the spool gun on that original video that you guys seen. I'll leave links in the description to my original unboxing and performance video there, but I've only used a spool gun two or three other times since then for jobs and it worked fine, but 
I just don't use a spool gun a lot because I have my TIG 225 and I'd much prefer to TIG weld my aluminum than use a spool gun. So I also really can't speak to the longevity of the spool gun because like I said, I've probably only used it about three times. But overall, this has been a great machine. I would definitely purchase it again. These things are very reasonable and very capable for the price point that they come in. So that brings us to the second generation of MIG 180. Like I said, this is Gen 1 and they have since came out with a Gen 2. And there are two primary things that they changed on the Generation 2 of the MIG 180. The number one thing is the torch. This is a Benzel torch, if I said that correctly, and the newer generation comes with a Tweco torch. So it's a little better quality torch now, easier to get consumables for, and then it's also just a little more robust. I believe it's got like a strain relief system that comes out of the front of the machine just to kind of help protect it. The second primary thing that they changed on the Gen 2 is the readout. So this, as you can see, is a manual dial indication setup, and the new generation, they have a digital readout on. I know a lot of people were complaining about it, that they wanted digital readouts, and I personally don't mind this. I don't see how having a digital readout is much different from pointing to a number. A lot of people say that, oh, it's because we can get it more accurate, but my feelings for that is a lot of times with a lower dollar machine like this, you don't even know if that digital readout is necessarily accurate to the amperage that it's putting out anyways. So it all comes down to use the chart that's on the inside of the machine, use that to get you set up in the ballpark range for the thickness of material that you're using and the diameter of wire that you're using, and then just adjust it and tune it in from there. But that's just my opinion. So the newer ones have a digital readout. The thing that I think is really cool about all that is them adding this higher quality torch and putting digital readout in it is in that process, the price stayed the same on these machines. So in seeing that, I can see that PrimeWeld is really trying to listen to their customers and provide what the customers are looking for without trying to gouge them. So that's kind of my two cents on this machine. This machine also comes with flex core rollers to which I have not used. I've not ran flex core on this machine, so I can't speak to how that functions, but if you'd like me to do a video on that, leave a comment down below. So overall, like I said, I've been super pleased with this machine. As always, thanks for watching. If you wanna see more fabrication content, click some links that are gonna pop up here. If you wanna get notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button and go build something, guys.